Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. I am here with my co-host, JC. Hey, Wendy. It's a pleasure to be back. How are you? Yeah, I, I am doing fantastic. Although I think you and I were just chatting right before this the session here. I said, oh, how you doing, JC? And you said, I feel burnt out. And I said, oh, me too. <laughs> Maybe our guest today, David Shar, the burnout guy, can help us. Hey, David. Hey, thanks so much for having me here, Wendy, JC. Such an honor. Yeah, we are honored. We need you. We need you so bad. <laughs> and I think most of our listeners do too. Uh, folks, to, in our five series episodes, we are going to be talking about building burnout proof company cultures. We have an expert with us, David Char, who is the founder of Illuminate PMC and creator of the FTF burnout proof culture model. That's a mouthful. <laughs> you know, we, we have just, we are so excited to have you here, but I do have a loaded question before we go into everything. What is burnout? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And I feel like we use the term burnout all the time now. Uh, and, and maybe we've lost sight of what it is. And we, and we, um, it, you know, there's a fun name for this. It's called a jingle jangle fallacy where we start using one term for so many different things that the thing itself loses its meaning. Um, and and burnout really is this kind of exhaustion, mostly emotional exhaustion, but could, there could be physical exhaustion as well. Uh, there's this uh, layer of cynicism, and there's this layer of reduced personal efficacy or personal accomplishment where you just don't feel like you're accomplishing much, whether that's true or not. You feel like you're churning your wheels and not getting much done. All of those things happen in burnout and, and they happen at the culmination of this long-term stress uh, that, that just starts eating away at you over time. But it, but it's we can get into the details. But there are some funny little yeah. uh, things about burnout. Yeah, it's it's funny. I mean, even when we were talking about it just right before the show here, you know, I said it probably joking around. I really don't think I'm burnt out. But a week ago, I was fried, and I took I took yeah. not the whole week off, but I took almost the whole week off. Um, I ended up working like a day and a half because I was like, I got nothing left to give. I can't be creative. I can't be empathetic right now. I can't be helpful, and I just. Like, not that I went on vacation or anything, but I just did stuff around the house to, you know, get my mind somewhere else. So then when I came back on Monday, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go at it again. Today, I think I'm just hungry and tired. That's <laughs> <laughs> really inspiring that you took that time for yourself. Um, yeah. If more people did that, I think, and if more people had the opportunity to do that, because oftentimes management isn't, isn't, allowing for those opportunities, whether they say that they are or not. Uh, but I think if more people have the opportunity for that and took that opportunity, um, we'd be seeing a lot less burnout. Yeah, it's hard. It's even, you know, I'm, I'm a business owner. I work for myself, so I'm a team of one. And it's hard to go ahead and plan a vacation, even if you're not going anywhere. And I, I was really insistent. I had some people trying to meet with me too. I'm like, can we please move this till the week after the fourth? Because I cannot do it. I am trying to take time off. The funny thing is, David, as soon as I told my contacts, I'm really trying to take this week off, almost everybody backed off. No, 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 go do that. We could handle this another time. And so I think so many of us just, um, we have no one to blame but ourselves because we yeah. don't speak up. And then, you know, other people may, maybe don't have the, um, I don't know, the, the guts or, or the, uh, they don't feel like they can speak up. So then people just railroad over them. Yeah. Yeah. There is this sort of macho thing to it. Right. And we saw this so much more pre pandemic, but you'd walk into the break room or you'd scroll through your LinkedIn and it would be nothing but humble brags about how hard we're working. Yeah. Right. You'd be talking about how hard you're working, how many hours you put into this project. I haven't slept in a week. And it would be this sort of 
there's this, um, you know, Protestant work ethic value put on that. And I think that, that that's what so many people are pushing back against, which we could definitely get into. But but um, I think that, that that creates this sort of, you don't want to admit that you need a break. When yeah. you do, oftentimes you will find that people are like, great, that's awesome. Yeah, How great. I support you. And it's usually like, well, I need a break from you too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can support me by staying the hell away from me. <laughs> so what, are, you know, real quickly, just name some of the symptoms of burnout, uh, you know, and then we can, we can uh, throughout the rest of the, the podcast series to get into even the causes and the consequences. I think we know some of the consequences, but what are some of the symptoms where, if I am jokingly saying I burnt out, like what really would be the symptom to say, oh, no, you're not. You're just tired or hungry versus no, you are burnt out and you need some help. Right. So like like depression, burnout needs to last a certain amount of time. Like it's not it's not a it's not a right now sort of thing. It's over time. It builds up. But um the the primary symptoms are emotional exhaustion, which is what people really relate to um, the strongest it, actually, it's interesting. There's one study that showed that um, women um, were more prone toward the emotional exhaustion side of burnout, whereas men were more prone toward um, the cynicism and depersonalization side of burnout. So what the study argued was that on and in psychology, we're always talking about averages and and not trying to make you know, assumptions about all women, all men, et cetera. But what they found was that what it suggests is that that men were more prone to when they started feeling burning out to put up a wall, a self-protective wall and make that put that distance between them and the other people. Right. So male teachers would put up the wall between them and their students. They're feeling burned out. All right, now these students are just whatever they are in the grade book. You know, they're a bunch of names in the grade book. They're not, but we're not getting emotionally involved in their lives. Women didn't do that as well on yeah. average and therefore crossed over and had higher levels of emotional exhaustion. So they didn't protect themselves as as well with that cynicism, which the depersonalization is is a, is protective, but it's not super healthy. Um, but but then, but then what they did was they found that the women were then hit with much more emotional exhaustion because they refused to back away um, and put up those boundaries. Uh, so they got hit much harder with emotional exhaustion. But it is that emotional exhaustion piece, then this uh, cynicism that, that uh, oftentimes is seen as depersonalization, which is literally just, if you think of nurses, you know, my son, when he was um, really young, when he was he was just born, we took him home. A week later, he was back in the ICU or the the NICU, PICU, one one of those, and uh, and he he had this this uh, like fluid on his head, and he was basically ripped away from my wife from my arms, and he was in this this um, crib with all these tubes and and a wire like uh, uh, going into his head. And it was the most horrible experience that a parent could ever imagine. Right. Um, we couldn't even hold him as he's laying there crying. And I remember these uh, nurses in, in one of the most prominent hospitals in the world, um, right here in Baltimore, with these top nurses, they would come in and they would check and need anything. And they check all the monitors, and then they would leave. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, my wife and I both, we neither of us shut up. Like, she's a professional teacher. I'm a professional speaker. We never shut up. But we couldn't even get <laughs> our words together. And these people who you think probably signed up for this job because they wanted to be there in times of trauma. They wanted to be there for their patients and their families because of their, of their compassion. Um, they they weren't showing any compassion it mm. was very business it wasn't about the baby henry who's in the crib you know like suffering it was about patient in room four right or they referred to him by his diagnosis 
And so that's that depersonalization when it hits really hard, when burnout hits really hard, we put up these boundaries. Thankfully, he's he's great. I mean, he's a terror, but he's great. He's three years <laughs> but, uh, but but that's that's a real sign of burnout right there. And then the final part is that you just feel like you're putting so much in and not getting anything out. And that could be real or imagined. It's this effort reward imbalance. Um, and, and you just, you know, as an, as an entrepreneur in the summer, I'm not surprised that you were feeling burned out. I, I try to work over the summer and I'm like, where are all the clients? Like what? <laughs> you know? and so, so that can, that in a very real way that can lead to burnout because you're putting in all the efforts, but you're not seeing the rewards. And, and so that's the third, uh, major symptom of burnout. And then, uh, all this can lead to actual physical ailments, psychosomatic and other um, things. People can end up in the hospital. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, well, thanks for uh, uh, you know enlightening us with that. We are not letting you off the hook yet, though, because we have four more episodes to go. And in episode two, we want to talk about how managers can help prevent burnout. We'll be right back. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.